Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today, as we open up, our Bible study. Let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We worship and adore you. Yes, Lord. There is no one like you. Yes, Lord. There is no Savior like you. Yes, Lord. There is no God like you. Yes, Lord. We are amazed at your grace towards mankind. We yield ourselves to your direction today. Yes, Have your way in us. Yes, that you may increase, that we might reduce. Yes, Reign through your word. Yes, that people might come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Yes, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and everything. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Today, many people in the world are in awe of what Satan is doing. You see, Satan has blinded humanity so much that we are in a state of fright. That everything that he does seems to take to enormous proportions with, in terms of what we imagine he is able to do. Yet, if you bring it down, it comes to one word, deceit. From the very beginning to today and until Jesus comes back, Humanity is clouded in this veil of satanic deceit. We see what he wants us to see. We begin to look at life through his own lens. No wonder today we see so much violence. Murder. And this goes from individual pro to proportions of taking a entire states. The value of life is diminished. Why? Because he is the deceiver of nations. He comes through as the one who issues life. And therefore has the power to take it away. Yet the, he, from the beginning, his mission is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that is something that we often overlook in life. When you look at the drug consumption in society, when you look at the misuse of the gift of sex, when you look at the, the arguments that go through media every day of our lives, everything from the beginning is aimed at the human ears and the human hearts. With the view of getting their minds to focus on what the devil wants them to focus. But today's text provides us with good news. That this will not be the the same way it will happen forever. This will also come to an end. Let's read today's text to get our context. We will be taking it from the book of Revelation. Chapter 20, from verse 1 to verse 3. This is what the Bible says. John writes, he says, Then I saw an angel 
Nenda ba malaika. Coming down from heaven. Ngakokuva muguru. Having a key to the bottomless pit. Ngalinechi sumuluze chobu nyobu takoma. And a great chain in his hand. Nolu jegero olu nene mukono gwe. He laid hold of the dragon. Na kwa ato ogusota. That serpent of all. Ogusota gulio gweda. Who is the devil. Omulio liomi. And Satan. Era ye Satan. And bound him for a thousand years. Na agusibe miaka lukumi. And he cast him into the bottomless pit. Na agusula mubunyo obutakoma. And shut him up. Nagalawo and set a seal on him. So that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years are finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. This is wonderful news for us. Last week we talked about the first objective of Jesus Christ. With his second coming on earth. And the first objective we looked at is the destruction of evil. And here we see him. The Bible tells us that he will arrest the beast and the prophet alive. These two human representatives of evil on earth. And he will cast them in the lake of fire. Then he will destroy all the armies that will have assembled to try and wage war against his coming. Now, I want you to figure this out. There is this politician I had one time boasting. And he said, if Jesus came at that time when they had spears and they arrested him, and, and they killed him, how about now when we have all these sophisticated weapons? This is a, a statement uttered in ignorance. Ignorance of scripture. And ignorance of the power of God. Why ignorance of scripture? Because Jesus' life was not taken away. He gave it. As a ransom for our sins. Secondly. Every item of sophistication that we think we have. Will come to nothing. We saw last week that when the Lord comes, He will arrest the two leaders, take them alive, and throw them in the lake of fire. And then the word from His mouth. We decimate all the armies with all their sophistication, with all the weapons that they have. The snipers will have nothing, they will have no duty. We don't see from text any protracted warfare happening. What we see is men and women coming against the Lord on that day, being killed. And their bodies being laid on the street as food for the millions of birds that we gather. Now back to today's text. We then see the second reason why Jesus will come. And the second reason is to arrest Satan and bound him. Now this is very good news for us. Because the Antichrist or the beast has been arrested. And the very first line says then. 
So that points you to a chronological progression of activity. So this incident that we see in today's text happens after the previous one. So chapter 19 is followed by chapter 20. Okay, let me put it this way. Initially, we did not have the chapters in the Bible. So the chapters help just to ease our reading. So, John is writing and then he tells us that after the Antichrist or the beast has been arrested and the prophet and thrown in the lake of fire and the army is decimated, what we then see coming after that is the angel coming with the keys and the chain to arrest Satan. Yokana to Gambanga, Omlavewa Christo Nena Bio Bulima, Amuna, Gabamazo Quatiwa, Nama Jega Wenga Gatti Dua, Kata Malaika Ja, Nago Vedi Danga Bariva Mazenario Kajo Quata Sitan. So this angel comes with two items. Malaiko na ingido navy into Vividia Yokola. He's not coming with sophisticated weapons. Tajana Biakurani Savinevi Gavia Tumani. He comes with the key to the bottomless pit. A Janet Sumuruze Chibula Vunio Vutako. The second item he comes with is a chain. Echkose Savo Choko with the Chajana Church Verujegeri. The key is to open the bottomless pit. Echsumuzo Chibula Wetini Chitakoma. The chain is to bind certain weed. Orujegeri Ragendo Kose Sok Siva Sita. Once again, I want you to note something. It is not a platoon sent to arrest Satan. The, the Bible does not even give us his name. It doesn't even tell us his rank. It does not even give us his military experience. Why? Because that is not important. One angel is sent. Not an army of angels. One angel is sent with an assignment to arrest Satan. And the Bible says he will lay hold of him. And the Bible gives us four actions that will happen. First of all, he, uh, he lays hold on him. In others, he arrests him. All he captures him. Now, after he is captured, the Bible then says he is cast into the bottomless pit. Action two. Action three. The Bible says he shuts the door. Action four. The Bible says he puts a seal. But before we get into that, let me just take a step back. Who is being arrested? Here, the angel or the text does not leave us in doubt of who, that, who it is that is being arrested. The Bible is very categoric. The the one arrested is not a mistaken identity. And the Bible uses four term titles to describe Satan or to reveal to us who it is that is being arrested. The first word title that is given to him is the dragon. Now the dragon points to his ferociousness and the cruelty of his actions. Now, this points you to the dragon. And this dragon, the title dragon, is used in the book of Revelation 
12 times kati erinyali no gusota likozesa mu kitabo choku bikuriwe miruni 12 and in every instance it points to satan era bwe bajja erinyeri ogusota bakulaga anti ye satan all points to the devil the second title that is used is the serpent of old, which takes us back to Genesis chapter 3 in the Garden of Eden, where the first lie was told. And Jesus in John chapter 8 tells us that the devil is the father of all liars. In other words, all lies spring from the same source. Satan. Stan. And here he says, for he has been a liar from the very beginning, taking us back to Genesis. So when he talks about him as the serpent of old, he wants us to understand that the one that was in the garden, who was responsible for the fall of man, he is the same one that is arrested. Make note of that. The third one that is revealed about him, John calls him the devil. The devil means he is a slanderer. Now, slanderer is a word which would be like Malish, he spreads malicious gossip. See, it, it is one thing to gossip. It is another, or it is even worse, to gossip maliciously. So when we talk about the devil, we are simply talking or pointing to someone whose job role is to maliciously spread gossip. And finally, the John calls him the devil. Now, there is this common phrase that I hear people say, better the devil you know than the angel that you don't know. You don't have a clue what you're saying. Devil means opponent. When, when Satan is called, the use of the Tam Satan means he is not your friend. Satan means opponent. Satan means adversary. The devil Satan is your enemy. He is not your friend. You don't even have a clue of who he is. So you can't claim to know him because from the beginning what you're seeing is a lie. And secondly, he's not for you, he's against you. He's against, against your destiny. He's against you having life and having it more abundant. What he wishes for you is destruction. Both in this life and in the life to come. Make note of that. So, the Bible says Bible, the dragon, the, the serpent of all, through the deceiver or the devil. Then, for he calls him Satan, or the opponent. And all this points to the devil or Satan, as we know. And he says, This one is the one that has been arrested. It is like someone coming in a room and says, John. I may think, No, they are talking about somebody else. Or say, Nothing. 
Nathan may not even turn because he said, no, there are many Nathans. Na sana ina hizo wakita chukana wuzo antibanji ndo zaise mulala. But if someone comes in the room and says, John Mbazira Waswa. Na yoli wa gamba anti yokana Mbazira Waswa. I stop everything I'm doing. Awonde kapyo nabye Mbazira Waswa. Why? Because all the three point to me. Kubange agamanya agasa tu gangi. Now, in the same way, why does John go to all this length? to describe the person katirachio kana koze se bintu byo no kunnyonyolo omuntu omu so that there is no mistake as to who will be arrested ole mo kubuza abuzi ko kutegera ani akwati the one that has been arrested ona akwati dua is the devil ye muryoryo misita he has been arrested by an angel malaika ya mukute without identity and then the angel does four things that I want us to look at in today's text. The Bible tells us that he locks him up in the bottomless pit. Some versions use the word abyss. But one thing comes through here that many of us overlook. This bottomless pit has a, a door or a cover. And there is a key. So there is someone who opens, they put in whatever they put in, and then shut. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that it uses four terms or four actions that the angel does. One, he lays hold of the devil. In other words, he arrests him and chains him. And often the misunderstanding for people is but the devil is spirit. How can he be chained by a physical chain? Here the Bible is using symbolic language to help the finite mind to understand how this happens. So the arresting of the devil means now he is incapacitated. So, then the Bible says, after he is, he has been laid hold of, he is chained. The chaining does two things. It shows us one that his power will be taken away. His ability to perform is going to be restrained. So his potential in terms of what he can do is going to be heavily restrained. Then the Bible tells us he is then cast in a bottomless pit. Which points to an abyss. Something that does not have a bottom. So if he is thrown into or cast into the abyss, that means he is gone from the face of the earth. So being cast into the bottomless pit means there will be a time when he is thrown, put in a place where he is away from the face of the earth. So that is the symbolic meaning of that. The Bible then says the door will be shut. And I will use an allegory. Or an example. When somebody says, 
I have shut the door. It is different from someone saying, I have closed the door. When the door is shut, what that means, it is only the person with the key who can open. You who has been shut on the other side does not have the ability to open. So the angel here shuts the door to the abyss. That means from within the abyss, who is the devil, he cannot come out because the door has been shut. The third, the fourth thing the Bible says, then was put a seal on him. So the angel does not just shut the door. The angel places a seal. I will jot your memory back to the time when Jesus was arrested and placed in the tomb. A stone was rolled to the entrance of the tomb and a seal was placed on that stone. That means the stone could not be removed without breaking the seal. And breaking the seal would mean breaking the law of the authority of the person whose seal is inscribed there. So for you to break that seal, you would have to overcome every force, every power that is represented by that seal. So, in the case of Jesus, somebody had yeah. to overcome the Roman soldiers. For you to break that seal. Otherwise, you would be overcome. And on that day of the resurrection, the Bible says, the angel came down. Malaika yaka. There was an earthquake. The guards that were supposed to protect this seal were overcome by the fright. Then the angel broke the seal, rolled the stone away, and sat on the stone. It's like saying, there you come. Uh, you see, Bye. this is very dramatic when you look at it. But it gives you the understanding that when the devil is locked up, there will be a seal placed upon the entrance. Therefore, what that means that there will be no help from without. <laughs> so, no help is coming. No Commando unit is coming to rescue him. From the inside, he's At, shut in, he can't come out. He's in a pit without a bottle. That means he cannot come back to us. Then he is bound. So he's restrained. Picture that. Here, why does heaven give us this? They want you to see the devil from the lens of heaven. For far too long, 
We have looked at the devil <laughs> through the magnifying glasses of what he has placed before us. Now heaven wants you to see. We don't see any protracted battle in his arrest. What we see is one angel coming, arresting, taking him away. And John tells us it's going to be there for a thousand years. This is where we draw the word millennium. Millennium is a Latin word. With that is composed of two separate words. Mil, which is a thousand. And anam, which is years. So that's where we get the English word millennium. So even his local his incarceration is for a determined period. The point is he is not in control. There is someone who controls his destiny. Praise be to God. Now this text that we just read in the mind of theologians is one of their battlefields. There are two major clashing views. One of the people we call the pre- millennials. In other words, those are the people Bebo. who hold that Jesus will come physically on earth and establish a reign for a thousand years literally upon the earth. There are those we call the Amelian who hold the th the thought that we, we term as a millennialism. Now, to break it down for our understanding, we call these the first group the premiers. The second group is what we call the amirs. The premiers hold that Jesus will physically come and rule literally a thousand years earlier. in the fulfillment of the so many prophetic scriptures that we have in the bible the amirs on the other hand states that the instance that we just read about happened at the cross. And at the cross, Jesus overcame Satan. And he has been bound ever since. Throughout all these years. Throughout the history of the church. And Jesus is reigning now. For the a thousand years. So a thousand years is simply stating a defined period. And Jesus through the church is reigning. And the devil is bound. Concerning this view, I remember one argument that went on. And somebody remarkably commented that if the devil is bound now, and his chain, then this must be a very long chain that allows him to go everywhere he needs, to, wants to go and do the carnage that he wants. He, is currently causing on earth. So Secondly, I want us to draw our attention to 
second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 Paul writes to the judge and he says in that text that the the prince of this world or the king of this world has blinded their eyes talking about the non-believer their minds and to the light of the glory of Jesus Christ. That is why today when the gospel is preached, some will humbly receive the word. And others will stay blind to the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Why? Because their eyes are being blinded. Their mind is being blinded. And who is doing that? It is the devil. So how, how is he able to do that? If he's bound. Think through it. The reason he's able to wreak havoc now is because, yes, at the cross we all agree. Jesus overcame the devil. But this victory of certain bound right now is only experienced in the light of faith. So, if you are in Christ, you are born again. So, he that is born of God overcomes the world. So, if you are born of God, then in the faith, you are able to overcome the devil. But someone who is out of the faith cannot overcome the devil. And this is where both schools of thought agree. And I want you to see something. The Amils those say and they quote Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15 which talks about Jesus having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in the cross. And they go back to Luke 11, where Jesus says, you cannot take a strong man's good except when the strong man has been bound. There is validity in all this. But this validity is only with respect to the cross. That, and that is the reason why James comes to us. In chapter 4 and verse 7 and it says resist the devil and he will flee from you. So in other words he is restrained with regards to you in the faith. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ there is no way you are able to resist the devil. Praise be to God. Now, if you understand that, Peter paints the same picture. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. A, script, a scripture that we, most of us know very well. Where he says, your enemy, the devil, Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for whom to devour. And he says, resist him, standing firm in the faith. So how do you overcome it? 
mumuangula mtia. By standing firm in the faith. So for you to oppose the devil today, you need to be in the Lord. But this is not what we are talking about. Today, what we are talking about is Satan being bound and completely removed from the earth. And this is not for those in the faith. It is not restricted to only those in the faith. Those in the faith will resist him and overcome him. Uh, what we are talking about is not what will happen. And let me explain. The text is not pointing to the cross. This incident that is recorded by John is not happening at Calvary. This incident that John is recording for us is happening at the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And I want that to register in your mind that Jesus is coming in physical, feasible, visible glory. And after he comes, then the angel, not Jesus, see Jesus. The angel, Malaika, is sent on assignment to bind Satan. So this is different from what we see in Colossians. So let's not mix the two. So the angel not only binds him, Malaika takwata bukwas, but the angel sends him or casts him into the abyss. He locks him there and seals the place for a thousand years. So, having understood that, then a number of pointers come to us that whatever we see is the mirage that the enemy wants us to see. Right now, certain in the faith, in the context of faith in Jesus Christ, is limited. But the better news is he is going to be bound and locked up for a thousand years. And that is exciting. And I want us to pick it through the lens of another scripture. Several years before this was written, the prophet Isaiah wrote, chapter 23, from verse 21 to 23. This is what he records. And I read, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones. And on the earth, the kings of the earth. The kings of the earth, those ones we saw last week. They will be gathered as prisoners gathered in a pit. They will be shut up in prison. After many days, they will be punished. Then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously. What is the picture that is being painted? From this text we understand that when Satan is incarcerated, it is not only him that is going to be restrained, but also all 
the demons that work for him are going to be restrained as well for this particular time of a thousand years. Imagine that when all the opponents of humanity when all those that spread malicious propaganda of blasphemies concerning humanity are got together. And they are locked up in a place where they can't come back. What will it be upon the earth? It will come back to that place like it was in the beginning. Where men will now take a decision not based on what the devil is doing but personally on what their conscience tells them. But the beauty of it, like we will see in the subsequent text, that when Satan is removed, he is removed for a purpose. Verse 3 tells us that the purpose he is removed so that he does not keep deceiving the nations anymore. The point is Satan's deceit will come to an end. At the end of it all, Jesus, yes. truth Mazima. will reign. Mazima Gadja Fuga. Why? Because Satan will be bound. Kubanga Sitana Jakwatiwa. In the end, the one who said, I am the truth, Jesus Christ, Christ. wins Aufuga. and reigns. Nawangula. And in the next episode, we shall see that he does not reign alone, but we, the saints, get to reign with him. Therefore, I ask you, where does that put you? Are you still seeing yourself through the lens of what the devil wants you to see? And you don't see any way of escape. There is a way of escape. Jesus is the way. And today, Jesus has his arms extended, inviting you to come to that place of fellowship. Where you will stand in the faith and be able to overcome the devil in the present. But the better news is, when he comes again, you then get to reign with him. Why don't you say this prayer Invite Jesus in your life. Ask him to forgive you sin. Fill you with his spirit. And give you a new perspective to life. Say this prayer with me. Father in heaven. I thank you because you are the creator of mankind. Your love, your grace, your mercy are beyond such. I thank you for Jesus Christ for the price he paid and for the victory that I can have in him. As I stand, Lord, I am overcome by the enemy, the enemy of my soul. I need help. I am overcome by sin. I am overcome by guilt. I am overcome by shame. Lord, I cry to you. Forgive me. Cleanse my sins. Give me victory over this shame. 
over this guilt over sin. Write my name in the book of life. That in this time, in the faith, I will be able to overcome the devil. But when you come again also, I will be able to reign with you. Thank you, Lord, for saving you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You have been wonderfully saved. For the Bible says, we believe with our hearts the Lord Jesus, that he came, died, and rose again. And we confess with our mouth. When we believe with our hearts, we obtain the righteousness of God. When we confess our mouth, then we are saved. So you have been gloriously and graciously saved. Call that number on the screen. Somebody will give you the first instruction on this journey of faith. And your life will never be the same again. So for all of us, those that are called to reign with Christ in this life, and in the life to come, we celebrate together. Please give us a call and tell us what God is doing in your life. And together we will give praise and glory to Him. From Dominion Church, we say shalom. God richly bless you. Let's meet again next week. Amen. Amen.